Good morning. Uh, my name is Justin Bamberg, um, attorney with Bamberg Legal, and I'm also a, a state representative in South Carolina down in House District 90. Um, you see, there's a lot of support here today. Uh, there's been a lot of support uh, ever since this incident surfaced yesterday. Um, Ricky and Travis Price. Um, I will go ahead and say this now. It's the only thing I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say on this part. Uh, both of those young men have been charged uh, criminally with various things. Uh, but one of the beautiful parts about America is that if you're a citizen here, you're innocent until proven guilty. Innocent until proven guilty. Uh, and that will run its course. Uh, what we're here today to talk about is the other things that we see. Um, and as y'all know, I'm sure everyone has seen the video by now. Um, and it's pretty disturbing, okay? It's, it's pretty disturbing. We're joined by Ricky and Travis's mama. Their grandmother is sitting here, uh, who has been blessed to live a long time. And I'm sure that some of what she saw on that video reminds her of a darker time in this country's history here in South Carolina. Uh, we're here, we're joined with Pastor Cunningham of uh, Vision Fellowship. Uh, we're joined with uh, leaders of Black Lives Matter Rock Hill, uh, with the NAACP branch here, uh, with a good friend of mine and a, a true public servant, Representative John King. And you're gonna hear from various people today um, I watched the video and, and I get it, I get it. Law enforcement has a job to do. Um, they investigate, they arrest people, uh, but above all their job is to protect and serve. Down in Bamberg County where I live, uh, my father is the sheriff. And if someone were to ask me how many people have been beat down by law enforcement under his command, I could answer that in a split second. The answer is zero. There's no reason for the level of force we saw used on that video yesterday. There's no reason for that. Both of these fellas, completely unarmed. Law enforcement, you know, thought they broke the law, decided to arrest them and, and go on to charge them, but somehow they forgot that just because you think someone broke the law, just because you're going to arrest them, that you also get to punish them in the process. And that's not how things work here in America. Innocent until proven guilty. I'm familiar with Rock Hill. Uh, we've seen in the past the way that citizens can be treated here. Uh, so if you wonder, why people took to the streets last night, um, it's, it's more than just watching Ricky Price get punched in the face by law enforcement or get continuously hammered in the leg by law enforcement or to see his younger brother Travis get mush-faced and pushed in the throat against a big steel cylinder. It's more than just that. It's about the underlying principle of why, time and time again, we have to see this level of force used on people that look like us. It blows my mind to sit here once again and have to say, Dylan Roof can go and kill nine people and Mother Emanuel, including a sitting senator, and he gets Burger King but Ricky Price gets a knuckle sandwich. Why? And we're gonna find out why. Absolutely. It's my understanding that, you know, this may have been some special unit or a joint operation with the Rock Hill Police Department and Department of Homeland Security. Um, I, I don't believe they wear body cameras. There should be some dash cam, I would hope. Uh, and if there's not, then I guess the only video we have to go off of is the, the witness video, as well as any surveillance we're able to obtain uh, from the store. 
those who may not know, Ricky is hurt. And he's hurt bad. He's got a broken nose. He's in a wheelchair. And you gotta ask yourself, how, how's a citizen who's innocent still? He's innocent right now. He'll be innocent tomorrow. He'll be innocent the week after that. Depending on how the court system plays out, Ricky gonna be innocent for the next two, three, four years. And how does an innocent person who is yet to be proven guilty end up in a wheelchair? It's kind of frustrating. You know, and for those citizens, obviously, people fall on different sides of the fence. You got some people who think law enforcement can do no wrong. You got some people who think citizens can do no wrong. Well, reality is a lot of times it falls in the middle. And for those people who want to judge Ricky Price or judge his brother Travis and say, well, look at the charges they brought against, against Mr. Price. I want you to think about Jethro Devane. It's another client of mine, 71 years old, African-American male pulled out of his house at gunpoint in this very city completely naked. Mm. Cussed at, completely mm. naked. Absolutely. Gun pointed at him, completely naked. His neighbor asleep in the car. You think I care about private property? I don't care about private property. There are issues that have to be addressed, not just in Rock Hill, but everywhere. And we've got to have these discussions, and they're uncomfortable. But how many people have to end up getting punched in the face, end up in a wheelchair, or end up dead? Before we say, right, and I've looked at Rock Hill's policies on use of force, right? Every agency has them. And there are things like pressure points. And there's open hand techniques that are used uh, via, to get compliance via pain. Nobody's policy says you can punch somebody in the face. It's not in there. It's not in there. Nobody's policy says that. That's not an appropriate use of force. Not on unarmed people. Not on innocent citizens who have yet to be proven guilty. And quite frankly, it doesn't matter what law enforcement agencies' policies say, because at the end of the day, we the people in this country, we need to make the determination what type of policing do we think is appropriate for our communities? And just because the policies say one thing doesn't mean they can't change. Ladies and gentlemen, man, when, when these things happen, right, we got to start thinking about people's families. Here's a perfect example. We got to think about people's families, man. And I get it, man, law enforcement, you want to make an arrest. That's your job. But your job is also to, to do everything you can to not hurt somebody. And this mom got to see her son in a wheelchair with a broken nose trying to get his medication in the jail. Now you're going I'm gonna I'm gonna pass the mic here in a second, but I do want to say one thing. Um, and I was watching as things unfolded last night, and 
uh, protesting is the very spirit of America, mm -hmm. right? It's, it's at the very essence of what it means to be an American is to protest. And that's perfectly fine. Uh, someone thought it was a smart idea to set a fire or something in front of the Rock Hill Police Department. That is not okay. It's not okay mm -hmm. at all. At all. That is not okay. And what we're not gonna have happen, right? And if you're in the streets and you're protesting and you're making your voice heard, we thank you for that. You're doing your civic duty. It's just like voting. And that's okay. But if you are really for the cause, that is the equal treatment of citizens across America or in Rock Hill, if you're against excessive and unnecessary use of absolutely, force, absolutely. If you go set a fire, you ain't doing anything but hurting the cause. You're hurting the families that are going through the pain associated with the incident that you're mad about. Absolutely. And you're becoming the very thing exactly. that you detest. Yes. Yes, sir. So please, please, no more of that. If I see 10,000 people making their voices heard, I'll sit back, sip my tea, and clap my hands. Absolutely, mm -hmm. I'm with you there. Absolutely, absolutely. But we don't want to see anybody hitting police shields. Mm -hmm. That's right. Mm -hmm. no. Not every officer's bad. That's, That's right. right. The institution has problems because there are problem people within the institution. Yes, sir. But not every officer is willing to punch a man in the face That's who's right. unarmed. Yes. And when things go past a certain point during protests, those officers lose. And if you want to fix the problem and you want allies in law enforcement, you got to be willing to acknowledge that. That's right. Yes. So with that said, we're going to let Mama recover a bit. I'm going to have Representative John King come and speak as uh, the state representative for this area. Thank you, Thank you uh, Representative Bamberg and to the news media. I appreciate you all being here today, but let me say enough is enough. And we as black folk in this community, in this state, and in this country, we are tired of being tired of seeing black men and black women beaten and killed in this country. I stand here today mad, upset, that something like this would happen in a community where we post around our city. No room for racism. Blatant racism happened on yesterday when a gang of white cops mm -hmm. beat on two black men mm -hmm. from a traffic stop that we are told because of a signal. If you can be beaten because you fail to turn on your signal or cross the line in this state while driving, shame on South Carolina. I will not stand by as the only black state representative in this community mm -hmm. and allow my people to be assaulted. Now I'm calling on the city mm -hmm. to do a thorough investigation outside of their office. I'm asking for the Citizen Review Committee to look at it. I'm asking for SLED to come in and find out what happened on yesterday. Not only does the family deserve answers, but the citizens of this community Absolutely. deserve answers. I'm asking the mayor to do his job. I'm asking the chief to do his job and assure that black men and black women can travel through this city and in this county and feel safe. So I want you all to know, as the elected state rep here, I will not stand idly by and allow my people to be assaulted. Thank you. 